Hello. There's a certain phrase that recurs three times in the Bible. Once in the Torah, once in the prophets, and once in the writings. That phrase is refused to be comforted. Let's examine it closely and try to understand it. In this week's Torah portion, Vayeshev, Jacob refuses to be comforted. Vayma'en lehit nahem, for the apparent death of his son Joseph. Quote, then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Unquote. Likewise, in the book of Jeremiah, Rachel refuses to be comforted. Me'ana lehilahem after the death and destruction following the fall of the first temple. Quote, Thus says the Lord, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted regarding her children, because they were no more. Thus says the Lord, Refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for there is a reward for your actions, said the Lord, and they shall return from the land of the enemy. And there is hope for your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come again to their own border. Unquote. In the book of Psalms, we see a similar generic statement. My soul refuses to be comforted. Quote, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God that he may hear me. In the day of my distress, I seek the Lord. My hand is stretched out in the night and does not rest. My soul refuses to be comforted." Unquote. Why did these people refuse to be comforted after experiencing a tragedy? Let's explore some possibilities. In the case of Jacob, he's not sure his son Joseph is dead. There is only circumstantial evidence of his death, the bloody tunic. The rabbis of the Talmud said, Rabbi Yosei said, one can be comforted for the dead, but not for the living. God decreed that a dead person will eventually be forgotten from the heart, but not a living person. Unquote. So consolation is not appropriate if there is a chance the victim is alive. The brothers did not convince their father Jacob of Joseph's death, but he had to exonerate them because the Torah says, quote, If a man gives an animal to his neighbor for safekeeping, and he dies or is injured or stolen, the neighbor shall take an oath before the Lord that he did not lay hands on the property. If the animal was torn to pieces by a wild animal, he shall bring the remains as evidence and he will not be required to pay for the torn animal." Unquote. So a guardian, a shomer, is not responsible for loss through accident or theft. For example, Jacob kept Laban's animals and occasionally some died. Jacob says to Laban, quote, I did not bring you animals torn by wild beasts. I bore the loss myself, unquote, implying he was not responsible for killings done by wild beasts. So the brothers, quote, bring the remains as evidence, unquote, as enjoined by the Torah, and Jacob must exonerate them based on what he sees. But a judge may still hold private doubts, even though he has to acquit for insufficient evidence. So Jacob does not necessarily believed, believe what his son said, and so refuses to be comforted, hoping that Joseph is still alive. One can also speculate that if he allows himself to be comforted by his sons, they will feel in their heart that they are off the hook. Now let's examine the circumstantial evidence. The Torah says, quote, And the brothers took Joseph's coat, killed the goat, dipped the coat in the blood, brought the coat to their father, and said, We have found this. Is it your son's coat or not? Jacob said, It is my son's coat. A wild beast has devoured him. Joseph has undoubtedly been torn to pieces. Un but the Torah does not say the robe was torn to pieces, only that it was bloody. So Jacob wondered, If Joseph was attacked by the beasts, why is the robe not torn? So he became suspicious. The Maharal in 16th century Prague even asks, If Jacob can't find it in him to be comforted, Maybe he should conclude from that alone that his son is alive. Also, Jacob was not mourning only for Joseph. 
he knew his mission was to start the Jewish people off with 12 tribes. But with Joseph dead, he felt he had failed. And for this, he could not be comforted. Another possibility is a temporary loss of faith. A mourner may be so angry at God for allowing his loved one to die that he refuses to accept reality and make his peace with it. The psalmist writes, quote, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. I cry in the night and have no rest. Unquote. Also, refusing to be comforted may be the normal initial reaction of a mourner. The Abu Dirham in 14th century Spain finds evidence for that in the seven Haftarot of Consolation we read from right after Tisha B'Av to before Rosh Hashanah, all from the book of Isaiah. Vait Hanan, Ekev, Re'e, Shoftim, Kitetse, Kitavo, and Nitzavim. He interprets the first verse of each of these seven Haftarot as a conversation between God, Israel, and the prophets, showing the progression of feelings. Quote, on the first Shabbat, the Holy One says to the prophets, Nahamu, Nahamu Ammi, be comforted, be comforted, my people. But the people refuse to accept the words of the prophets. So we hear on the second Shabbat, Vatomer Zion Azavani Hashem. And Zion says, the Lord has forsaken me and my, and my Lord has forgotten me. On the third Shabbat, the prophets report to God, Aniya So'ara Lu Lo Nuhama. The afflicted, the storm-tossed one, has not been comforted. Israel refuses to accept comfort from us. She wants to hear it from you alone. Therefore, on the fourth Shabbat, the Holy One, blessed be He, assures the people, Anochi, Anochi, hu menachem chem. It is I, myself, who is comforting you. And on the fifth Shabbat, God continues to raise their spirits. Rani akara, sing out, you who were barren who had not yet given birth, break forth into singing. And also on the sixth Shabbat, Kumi ori kiva orech, arise and shine, for your light has come. Then and only then, on the seventh Shabbat, does Israel believe that her time of suffering is over. Sos asim behashem, sos asis behashem, tagel nafshi be'elokai. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul will delight in my God. Unquote. We can also argue that the mourner himself must find ways to comfort himself rather than be comforted by others. The Torah really says Jacob refused lehit nahem, that is, refused to comfort himself. Why not lehi nahem, that is, to be comforted, which is the usual translation. Because the mourner must console himself by his own actions. Friends and family can only assist him in doing so. He must channel grief into action. He could, for example, complete the work of the deceased to ensure that his memory will live on. If disease or accident causes physical handicap, one must not despair, but re-educate oneself and get back in the swing of things. The Talmud says God decreed that a dead person will eventually be forgotten from the heart, but not a living person. How can the Talmud say that the deceased will be forgotten? For example, loss of a child usually entails lifelong grief. The Talmud answers, quote, It says in the book of Jeremiah, Do not weep for the dead or bemoan them. This means do not weep for the dead in excess or bemoan them beyond measure. How is that applied? Three days for weeping, seven for lamenting, that is Shiva, and 30 to refrain from cutting hair and wearing fine clothes, that is Shiloshim. Then, Shnei Masar Chodesh, Restrictions from attending festive occasions for 12 months, including saying Kaddish for 11 months. Then, Matseva, the unveiling of the tombstone. After that, the Holy One, blessed be He, says, You are not more compassionate towards the deceased than I am. Unquote. Meaning, it's time to stop mourning and move on. Finally, being comforted means giving up hope, and Jews don't. In the book of Psalms, King David tells us we must always remember God's ability to lift us out of trouble and never give up hope. Being comforted means giving up hope and accepting the status quo. Likewise, why was Jeremiah so sure that the Jews would return to the land of Israel? Because they refused to be comforted, refused to give up hope. They said, quote, 
By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept as we remembered Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord in a strange land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Unquote. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, former chief rabbi of the United Kingdom, writes in this respect, quote, The Jews are the people who refuse to be comforted because they never gave up hope. Jacob did eventually see Joseph again. Rachel's children did return to the lands. Jerusalem is once again the Jewish home. All the evidence may suggest otherwise. It may seem to signify irretrievable loss, a decree of history that cannot be overturned, a fate that must be accepted. Jews never believed the evidence because they had something else to set against it, a faith, a trust, an unbreakable hope that proves stronger than historical inevitability. It is not too much to say that Jewish survival was sustained in that hope. Where did it come from? From a simple or perhaps not so simple phrase in the life of Jacob. He refused to be comforted. And while we live in a world still scarred by violence, poverty, and injustice, so must we. Unquote. Never give up hope. Shabbat Shalom.